Glory to Jesus Christ, Yehoshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The walk as a saint is a lonely one. It is a path of affliction. And we often wonder how it is that we find ourselves in isolation and in loneliness. Why am I alone? It seems that even within my family, my circle of acquaintances, it appears that everybody is coming to reject me. Well, this is something that we are called unto and have been prepared for. If you look at Luke chapter 6, verses 22 and 23, it reads, Blessed are ye, when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Notice that in this verse, it is not written, Blessed are ye, if man shall hate you. But rather it says, Blessed are ye, when man shall hate you. It is already certain that man will hate you, because they hated the Master before us. And so it is not a matter of if, but rather it is a matter of when. It is a certainty. And this is why. Men separate us from their company, and they reproach us, and cast out our name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. For your belief on the name of Jesus Christ, the Almighty King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Alleluia. Verse 23. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy, for behold your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. You remember how the Bible teaches us that these men who came before us, the world did unto them as it pleased. The world was not worthy of them. Because they walked in righteousness, they were hated. And even our sanctified life and the works, the good works that we do, is offensive and even the world is offended not only at the fact that we have these beliefs but also they are offended by the good works that we do this is why jesus said in john chapter 10 verse 32 jesus answered them many good works have i shewed you from my father for which of those works do ye stone me and so when he was doing good, they sought to destroy him. And again, we were called to this. And the Lord told us in John chapter 15, starting at verse 18, If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. We have similar verses dealing on this matter of the world hearing its own in 1 John chapter 4. So I continue in John 15 verse 20. Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. You see, Paul also tells us, I would not have known sin, lest the law, had revealed sin. And so we ourselves, as living testimonies, as the light of Christ, we reveal to this dark world its wickedness, its iniquity. And our mere presence becomes a spiritual law regarding which the world realizes that it is wicked. 
And so by way of us being spiritual lights, we declare the world to be wicked in such a way that the world no longer has a cloak for its sin. And this is why our presence is cumbersome and troublesome for all who do not believe in Christ, being in darkness. Because if there is no light, then there is no evidence that there is a better way. And so on the one hand, our mere presence convicts the world, because we shed light on its iniquity, and the world no longer has a cloak for its sin, and therefore the world seeks to extinguish this light, so that once this light is extinguished, the world can rejoice in what it is doing and claim that it is the only way. And this is going to be a valid argument as long as we are not around. But once we appear as lights in the world and shine that light on the world, the world does not have an excuse. Still in John chapter 15, I'm going to skip to verse 25 here. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. Just by being light, you are hated and cast aside because you are a problem in demonstrating that there is a different way to live, a sanctified way to live, where you can have good works and not live in the debauchery of this world. But your presence is a problem because without it, then there would be no cause for reproach. The sin would be covered, it would be hidden. You see, in the beginning it is written that death reigned from Adam to Moses. Because from the time that the Mosaic Law came, it revealed sin in a way where sin could no longer be claimed to be hidden, and therefore people became accountable for it. And so, because we are present, the world is accountable for its evil ways. And this is something that was brought again to my mind by the Lord when I was meditating on 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. It reads, Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? You see here, we ask the question, Why did he slay Abel? Why did he do it? Here's the answer. Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. We are not told here, that Abel reproached Cain in any way. He did not address him with words of condemnation. We are told here that by the mere fact that Abel's works were pleasant to the Lord, and he accepted his works, and by the mere fact that Cain's works were not deemed to be proper and acceptable to the Lord, by that difference by the fact that their works were looked at differently in comparison one to the other, this was sufficient for Cain to decide that he wanted to extinguish the light that Abel was, which allowed for a comparison to be made and for a determination to be made that his works, Cain's works, were unrighteous. And so in other words, if Abel is not there, Cain cannot be told that his works are evil in comparison to other works that are better and that there is a different way. And so Cain therefore elected to erase and extinguish the presence of Abel and his works which allowed for the determination that his own works were evil. And this takes us back to the concept of us being lights in this world and by our mere presence, the light that we shine upon the world, it disrupts the world because it exposes its wickedness. And this wickedness cannot be kept under a cloak because the sin is made manifest because it is apparent that there is a different way without sin. But if those who are light and point to that better way are taken out, then the world will be able to say, there is no other way, and our way is the proper one to go. 
And our way to live a worldly life is, in fact, the only way. And so we are living testimonies of the power of Jesus Christ because our surroundings, the people who knew us in the world, they have seen the transformation. They know that we were once evil and are now good. They can see that we are new creatures, and therefore we are living witnesses and evidence of the power of Jesus Christ. This is why the world seeks to extinguish the light that we are, because we are the living proof that Jesus Christ is alive and His power is real, and to be feared, because they see the transformation and the world realizes when they see us, the new version of us, they realize that though they would want to do that of their own strength and become new creatures themselves, they are unable to do it by their own strength, and they necessarily need the intervention of God to clean them, to make them new creatures. But in their pride, they choose not to go that route. And so they prefer to justify themselves in their wickedness to say, these people are wrong, they're in error. In fact, we would want to destroy them so that in their absence, we can keep deceiving ourselves and say that we have no sin and thereby make God a liar. As we are told in 1 John chapter 1, those who claim that they have not sinned, that they're not sinners, they make God a liar and they're deceiving themselves, and there's no truth in them. And so what have we seen thus far, brothers and sisters? We are called to be separated from the world, and they will cast us away and say evil things about our name. Because we have a sanctified life, because we are light of a light nature, just like Jesus was, the light with a capital L, who came into the world and was not received even by his own, the world comprehended him not. And likewise we are not understood, as our light shines into the world. But the Master told us, They hated me before, therefore they will hate you, and they will part from your company. Because your light condemns them, it reveals their wickedness in a way where their sin has no longer a cloak because you are there as evidence that there is a better way. Now, this also is pointed out in John chapter 12, where the resurrected Lazarus is sitting at meat with Jesus and others. We are told in John chapter 12, verses 10 and 11, that the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death, because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. And so Lazarus was the evidence of the power of Jesus Christ. He was the evidence of the power of the resurrection. Alleluia. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And this was the evidence, the proof. So they wanted to eliminate the evidence, Lazarus, so that that claim could not be made that it is possible by the power of Jesus Christ to operate resurrection. And we ourselves, we are also versions of Lazarus because the world has seen the power of Jesus Christ in our lives where we have been completely transformed as people who walked in the lusts of our flesh, in ignorance, being blind, to having now become people who live sanctified lives and who do good works. The good works for which they want to stone us also. The good works that show that there is a better way to love one another. But the world refuses to have this light shine upon it because it wants to claim its iniquity, its wickedness, its darkness, and claim in hypocrisy that there is no such thing as a better way. And so, brothers and sisters, on many fronts, you are sought for destruction by the world. 
they separate from you because your mere presence in the spirit, there is a light emitted that exposes their sinful ways, their wickedness, their lack of love for their brothers and sisters in the world. And because your heart is filled with love, and you speak out of the abundance of your heart, when you speak to them, they do not hear what you say because they are of the world, and they hear a different language, one that is enticing to the lusts of the flesh. And your works are good, works rooted in love, whereas their own works are rooted in the satisfaction of the lusts of their flesh, the pleasures of sin for a season. And your own life, your own transformation, is a testimony of the power of Jesus Christ. And so some who have known you all your life, there is no denying that they know how you have been transformed. But for the rest of the world, it now comes down to your testimony. Have you delivered your testimony for the world to hear that you were a certain way and now have changed? And where they may glorify God in seeing that you were a wicked person and now have become someone living a sanctified life. Having gone, in my case, from being a porn addict and a sexual pervert to now enjoying helping people in need or encouraging my brothers and sisters to continue to walk on the narrow path that leads to the straight gate and meditating the Word of God, which now becomes the spiritual meat that I want to eat daily. Why are we alone? Because the world does not want light. The world does not want truth. And we are bearers of that light. We shine it in the world. But as was the case in the beginning, Cain did not accept that there would be evidence of another way, and so he sought to kill his brother. And when Jesus came in the flesh with good works and shining the light with a capital L in the world, the world comprehended it not, and they sought to kill him, and not only him, but those who were a testimony of his power. And now we're there as lights of the world, in these end times, in these last days, and the world seeks to destroy our testimony. The world wants to deceive itself further that it has not sinned and that there is no other way but the way of wickedness and lust and deprivation in which it is engaging at present. Why are you alone? My brother, my sister, you have been taken out of this world. The Master warned us that we would be hated and that people would separate from our company. And therefore we understand that our presence spiritually burns like an oven for those who are of a contrary nature so that they flee from this fervent heat. They flee from the fervent heat of our life, of our good works, our sanctification and holiness, it burns. And it further convicts them that they are in wickedness, though they refuse to repent and acknowledge the one true living God, the Holy One of Israel. Yehoshua HaMashiach But let us be encouraged, brothers and sisters, because by way of our testimony, great victories are obtained. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, by His power and Lordship and excellence and majesty. May you all continue to shine your light in the name of Yehoshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior. And know that you are not alone because we are a body and our collective efforts are giving glory to our Father, and He is coming to reward us very soon. Be encouraged, stay the course, and may you remain steadfast in your faith 
and shine your light at whatever cost it may be. Alleluia. Amen.